Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today a cool tutorial to show you how to create this kind of clustering and phrase simulation. It's a really simple and cool way to add detail when you want to create clustering. I will also show you how to totally control the way of your clusters. You can of course find the template and seal for this effect on my Patreon. Okay, now the tutorial. Let's go. Okay, so first I'm going to create a plane. 200, 200. Just rotate it. And I up the segment to 100. Okay. I can now just create a type setup. Open editor. And now in the front view, I will create two points to stretch my plane. So L per and point. I create now a point on the top of my plane, but inside the square. And I do the same for the bottom of the plane. Perfect. What I'm going to do now is just animate these two points, it may be 50 frames. Like this. And like this. Okay, good. We can see here the animation. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going back to type flow and I will create a brush object. Pick the plane. And I can now hide it because I only want the type flow setup. I will now convert the plane into a close with close by an operator. Hide the display. And I will now add a force to simulate the gravity. So minus 0 0.1, maybe too strong. 0 0.5 will be good. Okay, now what I want to do is to use this point to stretch the cloth. So I will add an object test and pick the first point above the plane. And for the test, I will set above object, which means that it will only affect all the surface above the point selected. I can now just duplicate the object test. Now select below, delete the point one, and pick the point two. Now I will just add an object bind, link the two test object, and add the two point. Okay, so basically, as you can see in green in the viewport, we have two lines on the bottom and on the top of the clause that will be bind on our two point. I can now simulate and we see that it works. But if I switch to the clay mode, we see that we have some problem with the stretch here. It's not really good. And problem two with the collision on the bottom. But it's not a problem. It's really easy to fix that. I just need to go in type low up the particle bind solver. It's already better here, but we always have a stretch issue. So I will just add a particle switch. And now it's perfect. It's exactly what I want for my stretch. Okay, now what we want is to cut this close. So I will show you two ways to do that. So I go back to close bind. You can, if you want, set the same settings as me for the binding stiffness, or just try by yourself. And now we will go in the cheering tab and enable close cheering. And we see here that we have a beautiful cheering on the whole surface of the cloth. I just always add a little variation for the weakness. And I touch nothing for all the setting. We can go in mesh tab, enable the shell. If I zoom in, I can see that the shell is a bit strong, so I will just decrease a little the values. Maybe like this. Okay, so we can see here how the simulation look. It's really cool, but I will show you how to more control the tearing of the cloth. So I just go back to my original plane. Defo shading. I open the material editor 
and I create a simple standard material that I apply to the mesh. I can now create a gradient map for the diffuse slot. I activate the render in the viewport. And now I will just create a gradient from black to white to black to create a small white area that will be used to tell to type flow which area will be affected by the tearing. Ok, I think the gradient is good like this. You can of course with the angle rotate the texture to precisely select the area to cut. You can play with the tilling, adjust the gradient. Maybe like this, ok. And once you are satisfied, go back to type flow and in the tearing tab of the close bind operator, just drag and drop the gradient in the weakness map. Of course, don't forget to select Use Weakness Map. And if I go back to Type Flow, we can see that the tier is just located at the place we set with the gradient map. Ok, perfect. It was just to show you how it works, but for this tutorial, I will keep the classic tier. I can now go back in Clay Mode. And now what I want to do is to create binding to this clause. So I will add the Particle Bind operator. We see now that the bind totally changed the look and the tier of our clothes. So we will go in the setting to adjust the look. I first set an ID for the binding. One. It will be used later for the spline. I can up the stiffness a bit. OK. I go forward in the timeline to see better what I do. I can activate the breaking to tell the type flow to break the binding. We will set up this after. We don't need proximity binding. I only select bind to parent in proximity tab. OK, now if I check the simulation, everything looks good. We will now just play with these two parameters to create the bind and it's the stretch to start. If I set a high value like 500, we can see that it totally changed the look of the binding and start to create a really cool small close line. Here and here. You can also play with the BIOS. It creates really cool result too. It's up to you to play with the two settings to create the look you want. Ok, so once we are satisfied, we will create a resample operator. interpolate mode and just select parent children for the resample. Now we can create our spline with a spline pass operator, particle bind to match with the particle bind operator and select the ID1 like the particle bind. So we have our spline which are totally related to the particle bind operator with the same ID and mode. I can just duplicate the force Select create new to create my tie spline and link the resample to this new event. Ok, now if I launch my simulation, we see that nothing changed. It's just because we need to go back in the resample, decrease the distance, maybe 0 0.5 and yeah, now it's really cool. I like the simulation with this fray effect. I can now just go to Type Spline and activate in the viewport. Maybe decrease a little the radius. Yeah, it's great like this. You can create different look just by playing with the subdivision account. You can also play with the jitter position. Yeah. Decrease the distance. Of course, you can totally change the look by playing with the binding. For example, here the stretch, like this. Or decrease it to have less long fray. It's really up to you to try by yourself to really create the look you want for a beautiful clustering and fray simulation. Ok guys, it's over for this tutorial, I hope you've learned a lot of things, don't forget the thumb up and to subscribe if you like my work, and you can also follow me on Instagram and support me on Patreon if you want. 
see you soon for next tutorial guys bye